Welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd show you how to set up a naturalistic mouse enclosure and the first thing obviously is the substrate itself. So I like to use a few different types of substrates so they can have different textures to dig in and explore. So to do this I just use this old cork background that I've got left over and I use this to divide the enclosure into sections. For the bedding itself, you can use whatever works for you and your mice, whether it's dust extracted, kiln dried shavings, like what I'm using, or aspen, or even cocoa soil. You just want to make sure your mice have a deep enough layer of bedding to dig in and burrow, so I don't recommend having any less than around six inches. So I'm starting by layering the substrate with the shavings, pressing this down, making sure it's all condensed, and then adding in dust extracted hay just to hold any burrows better and keep a better structure. You don't have to go with this specific hay, it is quite expensive, you don't need one that's this good quality, just because they're not going to be eating this as a part of their main diet like guinea pigs and rabbits would, so you can use any hay, just make sure it is dust extracted. I just like the way this one looks. Then for the other side of the enclosure, I'm just using shredded cardboard bedding. This is a really safe, good option that's really respiratory system friendly. And then I'm also putting in a substrate box or a dig box that I bought recently. And this has just got cork granules inside. Next, it's time to start adding in some of the accessories and items. I like to start with things like platforms and things I can bury down into the bedding. These not only act as a place to start adding other items on top to stop them sinking down and disappearing into the bedding, but they're also a place to sleep underneath the bedding and give them a place to hide and also encourage them to start making tunnels. A lot of these also look really nice pressed up against the glass of the enclosure. You can see your mice in there expressing their natural behaviours, thinking they're down there burrowed and hiding away and you can't see them. I will also pop in some paper bedding as nesting material just to give them a softer place to sleep. This is Fitch I believe, but I do sometimes use Katie Clean and Cozy. After that, the rest of the items start to go in. The wheels, I have these really nice natural looking wheels that are the 10 inch wheels from Night Angel. I do usually put two of these in, but because I don't have that many mice at the moment, it's not really needed. Cork logs are also a really nice addition to a naturalistic enclosure, both to bury and on the surface, and they're also a great hiding place. They're good for chewing, keeping nails down, and they also come in really handy for if you need to get your mice out of the enclosure for any reason. After that, I start to put in different hides for them, wooden houses, bendy bridges, coconuts, tunnels. It's really important to provide multiple hides throughout the entire enclosure, just to make sure the mice feel secure as they're going from place to place and not having too much wide open space in the middle of the enclosure. So always giving them options to hide and sleep and also have options to sleep away from the other mice if they want to. As it's currently summertime, I'm also putting in plenty of ceramic hides that stay a bit cooler, although I just like the way these look and usually have them in their enclosure year round anyway. So these are mostly either fish tank decorations or just pots from the garden center. Then it's time for everything else to go in just to fill the gaps, different bridges, tunnels, 
I also like to put in a lot of tunnels vertically as these come in super handy later on to hold a lot of sprays upright and keep them in place. Then I'm also scattering in a few different types of chew toys for them, just around the enclosure, and very importantly, putting in some foraging toys too. For water sources, I like to give them a choice. I give them a bowl and also a water bottle, and the bottle is probably the least naturalistic thing in the entire enclosure, but needs must. As for the accessories on the top of the cage attached to the mesh, I don't change these around too often because, to be honest, it's a bit of a pain to do, but they have a variety of different foraging toys, ropes, ladders, hammocks, hanging houses. You just want to provide your mice with plenty of climbing opportunities. At the top of the enclosure, I have had some mice that do prefer sleeping high up in hammocks or houses, so just making sure you're giving them plenty of options to choose where they want to be. Then to finish it off, I'm just adding in another layer of hay on top of everything. I love how this looks, but it also gives them more coverage and makes them feel a bit more secure. And they can also use this as nesting material. I will also sprinkle on some herbs or a flower mix just for them to forage for. Then comes all of the sprays I place around the enclosure, again just for them to forage and find. I've got a variety of different types, some that come pre-packaged that I sell in my store, also some that I bought from NZ Paws website, so flax, different types of millet, quinoa, all sorts. Also just as a final, final touch, I will hide a few treats around the enclosure just for them to find when they go back in and today they've got a hard shell nut and some pumpkin seeds. And that's it, that is their final enclosure. I hope this was helpful and maybe gave you some inspiration of how to make your mouse enclosure naturalistic. It's basically just about layering items based on what your mice need and their different behaviours. So my two neutered male mice, Sphinx and Griffin, are going in. And if you haven't seen on Instagram this week or on my channel post, I have had a rough week generally and when it comes to the pets and the mice. I have gone from having five mice down to just two due to tumours, old age and a sudden neurological issue. So it's all happened very, very quickly. Of course, it's not ideal to just have two mice. The dynamics of having three is much, much better, so I am working on sorting that as soon as possible, but it has just been <laughs> such a week, and I'm down to just Sphinx and Griffin. But for now, these two boys are the ones exploring this enclosure, and it's so nice just seeing them enjoy it after having a rough week. But thank you so much for watching, and of course, a big thank you to all of the nice messages that you guys have sent me in comments this week. That has been super helpful, so thank you so, so much. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.